At 4.13 a.m., Pokrovsk. The fog doesn't move. It waits. No engines, no radio chatter, just one sound. A single pulse on a Russian radar screen. Not a drone, not artillery. Something else. Something they've never seen this deep behind the lines. The officer leans closer. The echo repeats, stronger. He freezes, because the return doesn't match the direction of the signal. It's coming from two places at once. A ghost contact. Impossible. Unclassified. He orders an alert, but it's already too late. Above the tree line, a large ISR silhouette materializes on the Russian scope. Steady altitude, perfect signature. Every soldier looks up, and that's when the real strike begins. Not above, below. Because hidden in the fog, 30 centimeters off the ground, an FPV drone is already accelerating. Silent, cold, and invisible to every Russian eye focused on the sky. The ghost was never meant to hit anything. It was meant to make them look the wrong way. Impact in four seconds, and they still don't know what's coming. The pulse wasn't magic. It wasn't AI. It wasn't NATO tech. It was a $600 decoy transmitter built by Ukrainian volunteers in a basement near Kramatorsk. Fiberglass shell, LED pattern emitter, low power telemetry broadcaster, and a software script that drifted across radar bands like a phantom. Its job was simple, appear real enough to trigger every Russian sensor, but not real enough to be physically found. And it worked. Russian searchlights scanned the fog. Air defense crews scrambled. Thermal teams searched for a silhouette that wasn't there. Every eye, every system, locked upward. And that exact moment created the opportunity the Ukrainians needed. With all Russian radars online, a predictable rotation pattern formed. A two-second low-altitude blind spot each time the array swept upward. The Ukrainians called it the Corridor of Silence. Only two seconds. But two seconds was enough, and this is where everything broke. Inside the bombed-out apartment block, three FPV pilots checked their feeds. Analog, low-light, minimal noise signatures. They flew with no GPS, no uplink, no digital handshake. Just raw skill. Window in seven seconds, the spotter said. Launch on my mark. The pulse distracted the Russians. The corridor opened, and the first drone slipped out, hugging the rubble, flying less than two meters above the street. The second followed. Then the third. Invisible. Unaffected. Untouched. The first drone aimed for the heart of the Russian brigade, the command tent. The pilot skimmed under fallen rebar, weaved through apartment skeletons, and accelerated toward the tent's rear wall. On thermal, the moment is unmistakable. A soft glow. A heartbeat of hesitation. Then a white flash. The command tent dissolves into a bloom of fire. Russian officers dive for cover. Alarm scream but the other two drones are already beyond reach. The second FPV slams into an ammo truck. The explosion ripples through the fog, sharp, bright, disorienting. The third drone hits a mobile radar vehicle, frying the array that was coordinating the entire defensive grid. In 28 seconds, the brigade goes blind. One kilometer away, inside the skeletal remains of a school gym, a two-man Ukrainian EW team unpacks something far smaller than a rifle, a microdrone. Palm-sized carbon fiber frame. Thermal signature almost zero. Propellers nearly silent at low RPM. Its mission isn't to strike, it's to cut. The team locates the target on their tablet. The final Russian uplink mast still alive, still feeding encrypted data to the brigade's network. Launch in three. The operator murmurs. The micro drone rises like dust caught in the air. It weaves through rebar, slips past shattered pillars, and disappears into the fog, flying too low and too soft to register on any Russian sensor. As it approaches the uplink truck, the operators watch through a tiny black and white feed. The micro drone extends a sintered tungsten filament, a cutter no wider than a human hair. It arcs once, twice and the fiber line snaps. 
Instantly, the Russian network collapses into static. Screens freeze. Encryption keys desync. Data links time out. For 38 seconds, the battlefield falls dead silent. No uplink. No radar handoff. No counter drone link. Just systems blinking red, while the ghost pulse still drifts across their scopes, taunting them. A brigade designed for the digital age, reduced to the dark. Pre-programmed strike drones, already in flight, begin their approach. Without Russian radar, the battlefield becomes a blank canvas. Through thermal cameras, APCs glow like embers, trucks appear as molten silhouettes, and soldiers become blurred outlines lost in the fog. The first strike hits the radar truck. The second, the remains of the command tent. The third, a fuel carrier the brigade tried to hide behind a barn wall. One by one, vehicles ignite, controlled, precise detonations. The Russians attempt to regroup. They try to reboot their radars. They try to locate the source of the phantom pulse. But the decoy continues drifting, still broadcasting just enough data to seem real. With their network blind and their radars offline, Russian operators scan the sky manually, scanning for a drone that does not exist. Some fire into the fog out of panic. Others retreat behind ruins. But the corridor of silence opens one last time. The Ukrainians send the final wave. Not three drones, six. Six FPVs burst from the rubble like shrapnel. Two target infantry groups. Two go for vehicles attempting to reposition. One tracks a fleeing ammo carrier and one the final drone traces a radio operator who broke discipline to transmit a distress call. Every strike is surgical. Every impact is captured on onboard thermal. And overhead, the ghost pulse finally fades. It's job complete. When the sun rises, the fog thins, revealing the battlefield. One command tent destroyed. One radar truck disabled. One fuel carrier ignited. Two vehicles abandoned. 17 personnel incapacitated, and a brigade unable to re-establish its defensive net. Total cost to Ukraine, less than $800. Russian analysts later call it a sensor failure. Some claim it was NATO electronic warfare. Others insist it was a stealth drone. But the truth? It was a basement-built decoy and a team of FPV pilots using physics, timing, and a two-second radar gap. Operation Spearfall wasn't a battle. It was a demonstration. How a phantom signal can collapse a modern brigade without ever firing a conventional shot. Russian operators insisted they saw a large ISR drone. They even logged its altitude and speed. But here's the detail no one could explain. When the fog cleared and investigators searched the tree line, they found no debris, no drone, nothing. Just a single transmitter cracked, burnt, lying on its side, still broadcasting a fragment of the ghost pulse. The final frame of telemetry read, cycle complete. Spearfall wasn't just an operation, it was a prototype. And according to the Ukrainian team that built it, it was only the beginning. This isn't television news, and it's never meant to be. What you just watched is cinematic battlefield storytelling, grounded in real tactics, real units, and real events reported from the front. No anchors, no scripts from studios, only the stories of the people who fight in the fog, in the silence and in the shadows, the stories they rarely get to tell themselves. If you want more narratives like this, stories built from actual Ukrainian pilots, forward observers, AEW specialists, and the people designing the next generation of warfare, then take a second to support this channel. Hit subscribe. Not because it helps the algorithm, but because it tells me you want more episodes in this style. The silent wars, the invisible operations, and the missions that never make it to mainstream news. Like the video. If you learned something new, share it if you want more people to understand how modern war actually works. And drop a comment. Tell me which operation, which drone system, or which unit you want covered next. This channel grows because of you and because these stories deserve to be told with the weight, respect, and precision they earned on the battlefield. This is Battle Teller. And the next operation is already in motion.